we begin tonight with cleanup crews in full force picking up the pieces after powerful severe storms, including tornadoes, swept through Michigan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for 7 News Detroit at 6. I'm Carolyn Clifford. My 6 o'clock partner Mike Duffy is in Portage near Kalamazoo, which is one of the hardest hit areas in the state. Mike, you have been getting a firsthand look at all of the damage out there today. What have you been seeing and hearing from the people in the middle of all that chaos and cleanup? Well, Carolyn, I'm here on East Millam Avenue, which is right in the path of the tornado. You can see just how powerful those winds were. They chopped that tree in half like a giant pair of scissors. Now, Portage is in Kalamazoo County, which is one of four areas that the governor has declared a state of emergency, along with St. Joseph, Branch, and Cass counties. And of course, you can see why. Nearby where I am, a mobile home park in Pavilion was decimated, with more than 170 homes damaged and at least a dozen people hurt. Severe storms ripped up a FedEx building in Portage, trapping close to 50 people inside. Thankfully, there are no major injuries there. Back home in Metro Detroit, there was also plenty of damage left behind. This is Lambrick Marina in Harrison Township, where storms destroyed the pier and wrecked several boats. Now back out here live in Portage, this is where that tornado jumped over the road, passing over this housing complex at full strength. I spoke to a woman who lived through it, sheltering on the floor of her bathroom. I stood right here and my two neighbors were out here too and I saw the debris flying around and I was like, oh my God. And then I said, get in, it's the tornado. Nancy Gordon rushed inside for safety. I went in here. I went in this bathroom. You can't see, of course. Yeah. But I laid here and I put this rug on top of me. The tornado was passing overhead. I heard it hit all the trees, the limbs, everything. I could hear him. I was just praying to Jesus. I said, Jesus, please help us. Please help us. My closets were open, so the wind, I felt it actually lift me up a little bit. She says she could hear her friend and neighbor through the bathroom wall, riding it out as well. When I walked out of here after it finally was done, my bed was in the middle and the rain, the, everything was pouring out of that lamp. Now, the sunlight filters straight through her bedroom and living room. She can no longer stay here. That's my dad's hat. I'm taking that. That means a lot. But anyways, it's just... And I'm sorry you have to see all this. I lived this. here for 11 years, and there's a lot of nice people here. And what does it mean to you to see it like this right now? You know, when it comes down to it, these are just things and memories, but when it comes down to it, it's your life and your life. Like many others have told me, she remembers another tornado that hit nearby in 1980. And that was on West Main in Kalamazoo and I was in that one too. You were right in it? Yes, right in it. And I that's why I have PTSD and that's why I was glued to my TV. I'm like scared of tornadoes. The fact that it happened again, what's going through your head today? I'm just thanking God that Nobody got hurt. This might be a low income housing, but I'll tell you the people's hearts are rich. The destruction around me just really highlights a bit of what people like Nancy, of course, went through yesterday. As we mentioned, those powerful storms also ripped through a FedEx facility in Portage with employees inside. Thankfully, they're all OK tonight. And that's where we find 7 News Detroit reporter Whitney Burney, who joins us live with more. Whitney. Well, Mike, the cleanup effort has certainly been underway all day here in Portage, and you can see why. Take a look at the damage left here behind at the FedEx facility. You can see just how strong those winds, that rain was as it blew through this area. The facility is clearly a wreck and going to be down for several weeks, possibly as they work to clean that up. And the damage didn't stop there. It also made its way to neighborhoods. The heavy wind and rain also making its way to residential blocks nearby. It's kind of like a war zone. It was just power lines were down. You couldn't get, you couldn't travel anywhere. Front yards now covered in branches and down trees. A tree fell like right behind our car, so we had to take that out because mm -hmm. we can't, couldn't really get. All of the roofing flew off everywhere. The heavy wind also bringing down several power lines, causing outages. It's the incredible power of, of a storm like that, how it can literally within 
I don't think it lasted more than uh, four minutes at most. But the destruction, it sounded like a like a train roar. The Boyden family says they lost two cars and their roof. Oh, it was scary. It was, you almost can't remember what happened because it's just so burned into your brain and it it was quick. It it was here and it was gone. As families count their blessings. And this stall can be fixed, so it's no big deal. You know, that's why you have insurance to take care of things like this when this stuff happens. But it's just cleaning up and picking up the mess and trying to get back in the swing of things. They say they're looking forward to what's on the other side of disaster. I was just hoping that that power line got fixed. <laughs> oh, are you guys on I, I just wanted to log on VR. <laughs> He says video games are top of mind for him as families here in this neighborhood are working through insurance claims and getting those trees up. FedEx says that they are also assessing damage. They are working round the clock to make sure there is minimal impact for service. Live here in Portage, Whitney Burney, 7 News, Detroit. All right, Whitney, definitely a scary situation. Just thankful everybody is okay. Well, Governor Gretchen Whitmer got a first-hand look at the damage on the ground in Kalamazoo County this afternoon. She talked with community members and thanked first responders. I feel very lucky that this didn't result in fatalities, but the devastation is real. There are a lot of displaced families, a lot of businesses um, that have been uh, that are going to struggle because of the wake of this, and that's why it was important that we declared the emergency last night. A wild storm also causing a path of destruction in parts of Macomb County. Several communities left cleaning up the mess today. Take a look at this. The storm slamming the Lembrick Marina in Harrison Township, sending wreckage crashing into boats. 7 News Detroit's Simon Shaquette is in Macomb County tonight talking with those impacted, including a family who took cover just in time. The owner of a home here on Indianwood describing a dangerous situation last night. Take a look behind me and you can see he got himself, his wife and children into the basement just in time as that giant tree came crashing through a bedroom. After everything settled down, uh, saw a hundred foot tree uh, that had fallen on the corner of the house uh, into the bedroom. They've got a big mess right now that they're cleaning up. George Lewis recalls just having seconds to carry out his emergency plan, rushing into the basement last night with his wife and kids just before this hundred year old tree smashed into their bedroom at their home on Indianwood. Heard a loud thud and in less than a minute it was all over. A day later, a sense of gratitude for everyone making it to safety. Just started like health in the house and neighbor Jeff Lester able to exhale after seeing a frightening scene where debris is now scattered throughout the entire neighborhood. The sights and sounds of what came through here still haunting those who saw it. It's just like grayish and then the sky was green. Taking in the aftermath of intense rain and winds, I also visited the Lambrecht Marina here on North River Road in Harrison Township. Owner Jim Lambrecht giving me a tour of the hardest hit section. 10 boat wells that were affected here. Jim showing us where the force of the storm tore down a structure which crashed onto these boats. While the total damage is still a relatively small part of the marina, I talked to boaters sharing their sinking feelings. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't look good. No, I mean it's you know, I'm sure a lot of people are you know in the same shape I'm in. I suspect a tornado. I mean, and once again, that's going on the information that I talked to someone who was actually here. As cleanup work here continues, the theme we hear over and over is simply the fact that people are grateful that no one was seriously injured. From Clinton Township, Simon Shaykat, 7 News, Detroit. All right, Simon, a lot of damage. Thank you for that report. Now for some more perspective on this severe set of storms, Chief Meteorologist Dave Rexroth and Hallie Vogel from our 7 First Alert weather team are here to help us answer some questions. So Dave, I'll start with you. What made this storm so powerful? Uh, good question, Mike, because it's stronger than normal, right? We had a warm front that focused a lot of energy, especially in the southwest part of the state. The little bump show you which direction it's going, and south of that is where all the extra energy is. You can see the storms flared up there, and then as they went farther north into the stable air, they became just more rain. So you need ingredients to get a storm to come together. You need moisture. You need strong wind fields. You need wind shear. That can be directional shear, different directions at different heights or different speeds in the wind as we go along and then instability think of that as the buoyancy the ability to get things started and keep them going up well not only behind that warm front in the southwest part of the state when we didn't get behind it 
they had not only all those ingredients, but they were all very, very strong. And we talked about leading up to this, the concern that in that area would be the focus for the storms. And look at all the problems here, including the tornadoes, a lot of bigger hail in that region. And again, not much. We did have the one spot in Harrison Township uh, uh, north of the front here, but certainly south of the front. That's why all those ingredients came together, Mike, and made a big recipe for strong storms. All right, yep, definitely all those ingredients were there. Now, Hallie, the National Weather Service issued Michigan's first tornado emergency. Can you actually explain what that is? I know, I think we do need to explain. Many folks never even heard of a tornado emergency until last night, so we want to clarify. Fairly new, I would say, since 1999, the first one issued in Oklahoma City for a particularly destructive tornado. Since then, officially 199 tornado emergencies have been issued. So it is very rare for these to be issued. So rare, in fact, like you said, Mike, this is the first we've ever had here in Michigan. Union City experiencing baseball to softball size hail during this particular storm. And again, we look at why they issue it and the parameters for issuing a tornado emergency. So we're talking about conditions that are a severe threat to human life and imminent is imminent or ongoing. Remember, a watch is issued when conditions are favorable. The west side of the state experienced that. And then we have tornado warnings, meaning take cover. Tornado may be indicated by a spotter or on radar. We're going to the highest level above that, and we're talking about a tornado emergency. Highest level in this category means catastrophic damage is either imminent or ongoing, and that tornado is confirmed, whether it's visually, again, maybe by a trained spotter, or by radar, we call that a debris ball signature that's showing on the radar. So we always want you to take every warning seriously, a tornado warning, of course, those are more familiar, but this one, again, exceeding that at the highest level. And again, so rare, we've never had it before, Mike. Yeah, definitely scary no matter which way you cut it. Now, Dave, tornadoes cause most of the damage right here in Portage, but straight lined winds cause the damage in Harrison Township. Can you explain that difference to us? Yeah, the, the, the information was very, very evident on the radar. Now, some people saw this appendage on the south side of the storm and said, well, it looks like a tornado signature, and it kind of sort of does on this particular reflectivity. But this was about an outflow coming together with a gravity wave, which is another outflow that kind of clashed together, this quick uh, acceleration of the winds through the area. You can see here's Harrison, and the, what I put on here, the blue areas are the uh, shear. Well, again, we talked about those different winds, and so it left behind problems and damage in this area pretty isolated, and then it moved on and did something similar in southern St. Clair County. So straight line winds are the strong flow out of the thunderstorm. Very strong evidence that that's what this was last night in Harrison Township, rather than the rotational winds in a tornado. These can be bad. These can be a problem like they were in Harrison Township, but usually the tornado winds are a bigger and a greater concern. Okay, Dave and Hallie, so much I didn't know, I didn't know. Thank you both so much. Now make sure to stay with 7 News Detroit and WXYZ.com for the latest on the severe storm coverage across our state. We also have posted important information on how to stay safe in severe weather. Now, Carolyn, I know that you're safe there in the studio, but this has been quite an experience out here just seeing all the destruction and how much optimism is out here for people who survived through it without any real damage to persons. Oh yes, my I'll heart goes to out studio. to that one woman you spoke to at the top of our newscast, Nancy, talking about how grateful she feels making it through not one, but two tornadoes. So, you know, our hearts go out to that whole community, Mike, right. just uh, I mean, something to see for sure. Thank you so much, Mike. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Still ahead, a show of...